deep in the heart of the exotic forests of Madagascar live an exotic people who grow an exotic bean, and this exotic bean has an exotic flavor with an exotic name. They call it vanilla. Wait, 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 vanilla? Vanilla's not exotic at all. It's in everything from ice cream to pastries to shampoo to vapes. I mean, it's literally synonymous with bland and boring, right? But, surprise twist of narrative perspective, vanilla is not actually as common as you'd think. In fact, it's actually still the second most expensive spice in the world. The reason that vanilla became such a widespread flavor actually has to do with how easy it is to mimic. Vanilla was one of the first artificial flavors ever created, and to this day, an estimated 90-97% to of all vanilla flavored things don't have any real vanilla at all. Now, this might come as a surprise because vanilla flavored things actually taste like vanilla, and we expect artificial flavors to taste like a godless affront to Mother Nature. So what makes vanilla so easy to fake, and what is it about other artificial flavors that taste so artificial? Well, in order to explain what tastes wrong about artificial flavors, we need to talk about what a flavor actually is. You see, there are actually only five tastes your tongue can detect, so when you're thinking of distinct flavors, like the difference between a blue slushy and a red slushy, you're actually thinking of aromas. Flavors are really just a combination of chemicals that you smell while consuming a food. Your other senses kind of come into play as well, but I don't really have time to get into all of that, so I'm just going to cram all those irrelevant fun facts into the next two seconds. Got it? Good. Now that we're on the same page, let's get into why artificial flavors taste so wrong. Much like a baby, there are two main ways an artificial flavor can be conceived, on purpose or by accident. Some of the most iconic wrong-tasting things were discovered when someone decided that a new chemical just kind of reminded them of a real flavor. For example, methyl anthranolate, better known as artificial grape, or more accurately, vaguely purple flavor, didn't actually come from grapes. Chemists had been pulling it from a slightly less popular snack, industrial coal tar, and using it as grape flavoring for decades before anyone discovered that it could actually be found in trace amounts in real grapes. An even weirder example would be isoamyl acetate, which my American viewers would recognize as artificial banana, but my English viewers would recognize as artificial pear, or whatever it is they call pears over there. And that's because, sorry to break it to you, but isoamyl acetate is just a vaguely fruity flavor. Since jargonelle pears were all the rage in England when the chemical was first discovered, they decided to market it as pear. But over in the US, where those pears weren't as popular, they told people it tastes like banana instead. And since most 19th century Americans had no idea what bananas tasted like, everyone was just like, oh yeah, totally, this is definitely what bananas taste like. And just as a side note, bananas did actually taste more like their Laffy Taffy counterparts until the 1950s when they were all killed off and replaced by banana backups, but we have a whole other video about that if you're just here for banana facts. Anyway, for a long time, this was basically how all flavors were created. Chemists would be synthesizing some new poison to kill a sultan with, notice that their lab smelled vaguely like apples, and bottle up whatever was oozing from their machines for children to enjoy around the world. Obviously, it makes sense why a lot of these early artificial flavors, some of which we still use today, don't taste quite right. It's because they aren't right. But we don't live in the 1800s anymore. We have penicillin, rocket ships, and we can even make things taste like apples on purpose. In fact, we know exactly which 300 or so chemicals make up the composition of an apple, so why is it that Green Jolly Ranchers still taste like someone candied a rod of uranium? Well, it's because translating that list of chemicals to candy flavor is more complicated than you'd think. This job is left up to people called flavorists, and it's so tricky that there are only about 500 of them in the world. Basically, what they do is take a real food like a strawberry and mush it up. Seems easy so far, but there's actually more to it than that. They then have to sort through the hundreds of different chemicals that end up in the air and figure out which ones they need to recreate the food's flavor. In some cases, all you need is a single chemical. This is why vanilla is so easy to synthesize. It gets its flavor almost entirely from just one compound called vanillin. Most flavors, though, aren't so simple. Getting a decently accurate strawberry flavor requires 20 or 30 different chemicals, and that's only a small sample of what you'd find in the real deal. To make matters more complicated, identifying what chemicals contribute to a flavor isn't exactly intuitive. Chemists couldn't track artificial raspberry until they tried adding a substance that smelled like cat urine, which was also a godsend for chemists trying to crack artificial cat urine. But before anyone decides to swear off artificial flavors because they're scared of guzzling cat urine, I should clarify that they're technically no different than so-called natural flavors, which are also made by mashing chemicals together in a lab. It's just that instead of being sourced from petroleum or wood pulp, they're sourced from something that's slightly more edible. But at the end of the day, these natural and artificial flavors are just the real flavors with a few chemicals missing. They're like low-resolution flavors. Artificial strawberry is just strawberry with bad graphics. 
Could we make it more accurate? Sure. Is it possible to make a grape flavor that has anything to do with grapes? Most definitely. But let's be honest. There's just something special about the sweet, sweet taste of that industrial coal tar. But you know what also tastes good? The flavor of finally finding a habit that simultaneously works as self-improvement, is fun to keep up, and is easy to maintain. Or something. Some say it's roughly like bananas, but if you want to experience this firsthand, all you need to do is get started with Brilliant. They've taken their time to build over 60 courses, each carefully designed to break down their big, intimidating subjects like integral calculus, gravitational physics, or machine learning into small principles that they teach using intuitive methods. This way, as I know firsthand, you can finally tackle subjects that you never really got in school and truly understand them for the first time. So whether you want to improve your grades at school or get ahead at work, learning on Brilliant is a habit worth picking up for 2022, so head to brilliant.org slash HAI or click the button on screen, and if you're one of the first 200, you'll get 20% off.